So the next topic that we're going to look at is what is called an annuity. Um, so I'm going to begin with the definition. All right, so an annuity is a sequence of regular contributions into an account over time. So what this means is that perhaps you are contributing a certain amount of money every month into a savings account. Like maybe you're putting $100 a month into your savings account, okay? Or maybe you're doing a contribution every quarter, but you're doing it on a regular basis over a certain time period. All right, so the formula that we're going to use for um, calculating the future value of the annuity, how much the annuity is worth in the future, is on the screen. So underneath the formula you can see what the different variables stand for. Um, the FV is the future value, that's how much is in the account at the end of the time period. The PMT is the payment, that's how much money you're putting into the account on that regular basis, like if you're putting $100 a month or $500 a quarter, that's your payment. R is your interest rate, remember your interest rate needs to be a decimal. N is the number of payments that you make, and we talked about the N when we talked about compound interest. And so over on the right-hand side of the screen here, we've got just some common terms and some common values of N. So if you are contributing once annually, your N value would be 1. If you're contributing semi-annually, that means 2 times a year. Quarterly means 4 times a year and so forth. All right, and then the T value is the number of years. So this formula is kind of involved, and so we're going to look at a couple of examples. Um, it's not that the formula is that difficult, but there are a lot of pieces that have to be plugged in in the right place. All right, so we do want to be careful as we look at this. All right, so here's our first example. Um, Elijah makes quarterly contributions, okay? So I know right now, as I'm looking at this, when it says quarterly contributions, that my N value is going to be four because there are four quarters in a year. All right, so every quarter he's contributing $5,000. So that is going to be my payment. That's the amount that I'm putting into the account every quarter. So he makes quarterly contributions of $5,000 into his annuity savings account with 4.7% annual interest rate. Okay, so this 4.7 is going to be my R value. Determine the future value of his account after seven years. So this is my time. So that's going to be my T. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can set this up. And I have the formula up in the upper right-hand corner. I know it's kind of small, but that way we can just reference that formula as we plug stuff in, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just set it up. So we're solving for future value. And the first thing that we're going to plug in is the payment. So they said that that was $5,000. And then we are going to have a fraction that we're multiplying this by, okay? So at the top of that fraction, we have in parentheses 1 plus R over N. All right, so our R, now remember the R has to be as a decimal. So right now it's a percent, um, 4.7 percent. Remember that if you want to make it a decimal, you're going to move that decimal place two places back to the left. So it's going to become 0 0.047. All right, and that goes over the n value. So we said n was 4. Okay, and then we have an exponent up here, right? The nt power. So n is 4. 
and the t value is 7. Okay, and then in our formula we have minus 1, and we're closing that parenthesis on the top. And then on the bottom of the fraction, we have r over n again. All right, so again, 0 0.047. over 4. Okay, now at this point um, I would suggest that you talk with your instructor about how you want to put this in your calculator. Um, there are ways that you can type the entire expression into your calculator at one time and that is probably going to be easier than what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it piece by piece just so that you are sh I'm sure that everybody's following what we're doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do 0.047 divided by 4. Okay, so that is going in my calculator, just 0.047, and then I'm doing divided by 4. All right, and when I do that, my calculator gives me 0.01175. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not going to round these numbers because if I start rounding the numbers as I do it, it's going to throw my final answer off. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my problem here and I'm going to plug that in in place of those two fractions. So hopefully that's going to simplify things just a little bit. All right, so that top part is going to be, um, we've still got the 1 plus. And then my fraction, 0 0.01175. Okay, this 4 times 7 exponent, I'm going to go ahead and do 4 times 7. I know that that's 28. Okay, and then I have minus 1, and that entire thing is in a set of parentheses. And then on the bottom, we have the same fraction, 0 0.047 divided by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and put my 0 0.01175 there too. Okay, so that's helping me a little bit. All right, um, let me think about what else I can do. So um, inside the parenthesis on the top, I'm going to go ahead and add the 1 to the 0 0.01175. Okay, so that's going to be 1.01175. 1175 and I'm going to kind of leave the rest of it alone. All right, so raised to the 28th power minus 1. We're going to keep that in parentheses at the top. And then the denominator 01175. Okay. So now I think that I need to go ahead and get the top part of that that fraction done in my calculator. So what I'm going to do with my calculator is I'm going to type in 1.01175. I'm going to raise it to the 28th power, which for most calculators means that you're going to use like a caret key. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1. So I'm going to put all of that part in my calculator. And I'm going to get, it's probably going to be a pretty long decimal but I'm going to write it all the way down. Okay. All right, so I get 0 0.3869. I'm just going to write everything that my calculator gives me. So 1538.49. Okay, so I'm going to come back down here and let's put that in. All right, so I still have the 5,000. I've now done the top part of the fraction. So I've got this lengthy decimal here. And again, you really don't want to round these things because when you round and then continue to calculate with a rounded number, it's just going to throw that final answer off.
Okay, so that gets me to that point. Okay, so then I think that I'm pretty good about, I can just go ahead and type in what we've got there. And I think that the calculator will be fine with that. So I think at this point, I'm then gonna just type it in. And so in my calculator, I'm gonna do 5,000. I'm gonna hit the multiplication key. I'm gonna put this long decimal in that I've got here. I'm gonna use the divided by key and then that decimal, okay? And so I'm gonna put that in my calculator just like I've written there at the top of the screen. All right, and so that gives me, as my final answer, 164, um, 644, and because this is my final answer, I'm gonna round it to two decimal places because it's money, so 84 cents. All right, so that is what my account would be worth at the end of seven years for this annuity. So again, um, ask your instructor about how they want you to put this in the calculator um, if you are not sure, okay? All right, so let's look at one more example. Um, we're gonna do this one a little bit quicker. Um, Again, just basically going to look at the setup, and then we'll we'll get the answer for that one. All right, so it says Belinda makes monthly contributions. So if we're talking about monthly contributions, we are talking about an end value of how many months are there in the year? 12, okay? And the contribution itself is $500. So remember that this is going to be your payment. This is what you're contributing on a regular basis. Okay, 5.5% is your interest rate, and it does need to be as a decimal. And we want to know how much she has after 40 years. So 40 years is my time. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get it set up. All right, um, my formula is a little bit off the screen there on the right-hand side, but um, we'll, get it, we'll get it done together here. All right, so future value equals the payment, so the payment is 500. Okay, and then remember on the top, you have one plus the interest rate. So as a decimal, what is 5.5%? That would be 0.055, remember move that decimal place two places to the left, and then divide by N. So N is 12, because we have 12 contributions a year. Okay, and then we're doing N times T. So our N is 12, and our T is 40. So we're going to do 12 times 40 as our exponent. And then the part of the formula that's sort of cut off on the screen, um, we're supposed to subtract 1. Okay. All right, so that is the top part of the fraction. And then on the bottom part, we have R over N again. So we have 0 0.055 divided by 12. Okay, so that is the setup for this. Um, I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing, all right? So I'm gonna walk you through it, but I'm gonna walk through it a little bit faster. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to my calculator and take the 0 0.055 and divide it by 12. Okay, and that's going to take care of that fraction in two places. All right, and again, it's a long decimal, but I'm going to use that decimal because it is easier than trying to round and then having my final answer coming off a little bit off. Okay, so 0 0.00458 and then we have five threes. Okay, all right, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put that in, in the both places where there's a fraction. All right, so we're going to have 1 plus, and then we have this long decimal. Okay, and then we're going to raise it to the 12 times 40. So 12 times 40, I do not calculate for that, is 480. Okay, so I'm going to do that. 480 is my exponent. And then it's minus 1 
and we're closing the parenthesis there. And then on the bottom, we've got that same long decimal. Okay. All right, so what am I going to do next? Um, so I am going to come in. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do on my calculator is I'm actually going to do the top part of that fraction. So I'm going to type in, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to add the 1 to that long decimal. All right, so that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 1 point. All right, so we've got that part done. I'm going to plug that in, and then I think we'll be pretty much ready to go here. All right, so we've got 500 times. I'm going to put that in inside that parenthesis. Okay, remember that that number needs to be raised to the 480th, 480th power, and then we're going to subtract 1. Okay, so next up is actually the top of that fraction. All right, so that means that I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to type this decimal thing in, 158. We use our caret key to raise it to the 480th power, and we're going to subtract 1. Okay, all right, so let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to raise it to the 480th power. And I'm going to subtract 1. That's going to give me 7.97. I'm just going to write it down here. So we've got 500 times. The top part becomes 7.97976475757. And then we're going to divide by that decimal. Okay. And then the last step is we're going to just type that whole thing in our calculator there. All right, so we're going to do 500, do the multiplication key, type in the 7.97 number. Use your divided by key and then your 0 0.0045 number. All right, and that should give us our final answer. All right, so that gives me 875.19, and again, two decimal places. My calculator says 0.798, so I'm going to round that to 0.80. All right, and I'm just going to real quick double check and make sure. Yes, okay, so that looks good. And again, I would encourage you, um, if you're watching the video and you are getting a little help with this, that you also ask your instructor about how they want you to put this in the calculator because there are easier ways to type this thing in maybe than writing out these really long decimals. Uh, but you do want to end up getting an accurate answer when you're done. So you don't want to round too early.